Well, that looked like you guys had a lot of fun out there. Didn't you guys have fun? That was lots of stuff. It looked like you guys got kind of wet. Did you get wet out there? Uh, look, it looked like I saw a mess or two also. Yeah, it looks like you guys made kind of a big mess. But that looked like a lot of fun out at Vacation Bible School. And we're going to kind of recap what all you guys did. But before we do that, we need help, right? Who's going to help us recap? Ah, right, let's everybody say hi to Johnny. There's Johnny. How's Johnny doing? I'm doing pretty good. Wow, there's the... You really went all out there. Got these, I mean... Talking to these kids out in TV land like we've been doing, you know, I mean, these all, you set up all these little mannequins, these dummies and everything, they're still like No, 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 we're back live. These are the real kids. What, these aren't mean, the dummies. You mean those are the real kids again? Oh, I miss, oh, I so missed you guys. Wow, it's so good to see you guys again. I missed you. Oh, man, I'm glad you're back. I think everybody's glad to be back on this. Yeah. Getting back to some kind of normalcy with this. So that's good. Well, yeah, we're back and the kids have been having all sorts of fun, Johnny. Oh, oh, I heard about that. Yeah, they went on that, 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 that BSV, VB bar, RC, VB Yeah, your something. spelling's not yeah, quite yeah, right, but things. yeah, Vacation Bible School, VBS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was going to come. I was going to come. I thought, oh, boy, I'm going to make it. I'm going to come. And then I got all ready, and I got ready, and I started to pop out of my box, and I went, <clears throat> somebody said something on top of my box. I didn't get to go. Oh, yeah, I might have put something on top of that box. Yeah, uh, it was Yeah, that, okay. Okay, sorry about that. Next time we'll get it though. Okay, so, 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 so tell me about what all happened. Tell me what all happened. Oh, they had a great time. Like the first day, they talked about God's creation, is what they talked about. Oh, there's lots of that to talk about. There's yeah, lots yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah. God created a great big earth, a wonderful space for us. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Flowers and hummingbirds and That's all kinds right. of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody likes hummingbirds, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are just the prettiest things there ever was. Yeah. Yeah, everybody likes those hummingbirds. They are pretty mm -hmm. good. You know, and God created the seasons for us, you know? Yeah, here yeah, in Oklahoma, yeah, yeah. you know, it's mainly hot seasons, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's there's the wet season and the hot season and then the, the actual nice season and then cold. Yeah. That, that, that's about what we get here in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Yep. But And that but, was Tuesday. That was Tuesday. Yeah, that's what happens. That's in Oklahoma. That's what happens. But so... Uh, what what thing did God create is your favorite? What's your favorite thing that God created? Oh, it, it's got to be the stored fish. What? Yeah, the stored fish. You know, he's got a sword on his face, and he's all, like, fighting people. And he's like, ding, 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 ding. That sounds like a boy answer right there, because of what yeah. that is. That's a boy answer. But that's what they did on the first time they met together. But the second time that they met together, uh, they talked about listening to God. And listening to God? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got to listen hard. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah. if you he's listen. way away. You got to listen real quiet. <laughs> but yeah, but he also comes to us and talks. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And if you're and listening to God is like a wise man, is what it is. Remember, so uh, when God talks to you and you listen to Him, it's like you're building your house and you're building it on a firm foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Firm, but, strong, and tough. Right. But yeah, so some people down. they don't listen to God, and when they try to build a house, they just ah, oh, we'll just put it up over here somewhere, you know. And they start to build it, but when the winds come and the waves <laughs> might splash against it, yeah. That's what happens, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just it fall. falls because they didn't listen to what God had to say. So, and we got some wise guys, wise men here. You know that? Yeah, we got lots of wise guys. Yeah, in here, we yeah. got we got some wise. Yeah, well, like Doug Parsons. Doug Parsons is wise. Doug, Doug Parsons in the back over there. Yeah, Doug. The wisest thing he ever did was get Nancy to marry him. Well, okay, we're not going to argue that. Okay, let, 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 we're not going to argue that one. Um, what, what about Forrest? Forrest Brandt. Yeah, what about... <laughs> Forrest! <laughs> oh, you're serious. Yeah, he's not... yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's very, he's, um, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, well, yes. hey. What about Pastor Brady? Yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's pretty wise. I mean, yeah, he talks to God. He listens yeah, to God. He, yeah, mm-hmm. Uh -huh. He's wise, uh, but... so he's got to be a wise, wise man. You want to know a secret? What's the secret? He's got a big L in his left shoe and a big R in the right one. Ah. Oh, <laughs> but he. Oh, yeah, he's a wise guy. He, know, okay, he's a wise, wise guy. guy. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. okay. Well, if you if you listen to God and do what He says, does you know, you'll be wise. That's right. That, that's that's right. what they learned on guy. that day. Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> uh, but the next time that they met, you know, what happened next? What happened next? They talked about uh, Jesus being or Peter being able to talk to anybody about God. Uh, oh, that's good. That's Jesus good. Talk to talked everybody to everybody about God. And Jesus said, "Who do you guys think that I am?" You know. And they've been walking around with him for a while. And Peter said, "You're the Messiah." See, Peter knew who he was. The Messiah. 
Messiah. He's the Messiah. Savior. Yeah. He's oh, this, going to yeah. He's, yeah, let's use those words. He's the Savior. Uh, the savior. Yeah, he's okay. the true Son of God. And Peter wasn't afraid to go around and tell everybody. And that's yeah, what that's yeah. what we're supposed to be like. That's what I'm not afraid to talk to anybody. That's what you ought to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, they walked and they talked with Jesus every day. Yeah. Is when we went through it, and they grew and they knew that Jesus was the only Son of God, and because of that. Jesus said, Peter, I'm gonna change your name. I'm gonna call you Cephas, which means the rock. Oh yeah, like like a nickname. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was his, like, that was his oh, nickname. Called, called him the Rock. The Rock, right? Wow, I didn't, I didn't know they had professional wrestling back then. Was he all like a like, WWF? Like, oh, no, 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 rock. no, no, oh. no, 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 not that Rock. Oh, oh. Not that Rock. Oh, not that Rock. Not that Rock. Are you sure? Because because me and my brothers, we do that all the time. We're all like, oh, 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 oh. and we 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 call my brother the Rock. You do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because because he's got a really hard head. Hard. Oh, okay. That must run in the family. It might. It might run in the family. Okay, yeah. But the, and then the next day they went out or got another together. day. How many days did they go? They wow. got five days. They five had a big day. fun time. They had a blast. Man, it sounds like it. Yeah, and the, the next time they got together, they talked about the Lord's Prayer, like what they did. Oh, oh, oh the Lord's can, Prayer. Yeah, yeah. You can pray any time, yeah. um, any place, anywhere. You know, you can talk to God that you want to. Yeah, 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 because because that's I mean that's some of the the greatest commandments and stuff he talks about. He talks about love and and you're supposed to to love everybody and everything and 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 you're only supposed to you're supposed to love God above everything. Is that right? That that's that goes into day five. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what they talked about on the fifth Sunday. They oh, talked oh. about the greatest commandment. That's right. Is what they talked about, and yeah, so, so that I, you love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. You love God. Very most important thing. In all this whole world. But the second thing is to love the neighbor as yourself. You want to treat everybody just like you would want to be treated. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to love everybody and treat everybody nice and kind, not be mean to them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's it's, it's kind of hard to love some of your neighbors, though. How's it hard to love your neighbors? Like my neighbor. I mean, he's, he's, uh, well, you know, he's got... I care. Well, that's okay. And, and he's right really skinny. And, They're skinny people. And, and he kind of smells funny. Eh, okay. No, I mean, he's got. I mean, and he doesn't talk a whole lot. I mean, I, I live in a closet. My neighbor's a mop. Oh, a mop. Okay. Well, okay. But well, maybe that neighbor doesn't talk much. But really. But you can talk. But he to cleans him. really, really well. Oh, he's a good cleaner. He's a good cleaner. Okay. But I do you, love that about him. That's right, but you can you can talk to anybody about God, and and Jesus was our good example, wasn't he? So we follow him, and do and follow the things that he did and that he taught us. We'll be great people. That's that's right. Just live that's, whatever Jesus did. Whatever he's like our good these, example. Yeah, that's yeah, like yeah, yeah. these kids right here. So yeah, they're going to turn out to be great people. So that's what you guys did about right. Yeah, yeah that's what you guys, that sounds awesome. like a lot of fun. Okay. I'm glad you guys had fun. All right. Well, Johnny, you might have to go back to that box for a little bit. But well, we'll get you the, back out soon. But I saw all this stuff outside. Yes, go play on that. that's going to be a lot of fun, isn't it? Well, okay, I'll, I'll go be good in my box. I'll sit really quiet, and then you guys come get me. I'll go play outside. Okay, we'll see how that goes. Okay, bye-bye. I'm going to be all good. Right. All right. Well, if Johnny keeps making fun of me, I might put something really heavy on that box for good. So. All right, kiddos, you ready to find your parents? And go back to your seats. You can wave at your kids if they don't remember where you're at. Looks like they found their way. All right, but even though you go back to your parents, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit, okay? So isn't it good to be able to learn through the eyes of a child? Did you know Jesus said if you're going to believe, if you're going to have faith, the kind of faith that really matters, that you need to go to seminary, you need to get your doctorate, and you need to understand the laws of the universe. That's what Jesus said. He said it's really complicated I hope you can, no, he said, you, your faith, the thing that really makes the most difference is you have to become like a child in order to believe. Isn't that interesting? So today we're going to learn through the eyes of a child, but I'm going to talk to kids and adults together because there's really not as big of a gap there as we sometimes think there is, at least not in my life. I'm pretty much a big kid. So Um, anybody know what a goat is? Anybody know what a goat is? Goat is? Or how about this? Anybody know what a goat sounds like? Let's hear some goat sounds. There's the one. The goats. Let's let's hear a JW. You got a goat sound. No? Can you make a goat sound, Easton? No? Somebody over here? Goat? There it is. Good. Good. 
Well, check this out. There's actually another type of goat. Did you know that? There's another type of goat, and this is the other type of goat. The greatest of all time. This is a phrase they use a lot in the sports world. They say that Tom Brady is the goat. He's the greatest quarterback of all time. And so it's it's more than just an animal, but sometimes it's really hard to pick the greatest of all time, isn't it? And anything. So let's try this. Tell me, what's the greatest superhero of all time? Superman? Who's the greatest superhero? Batman? Wonder Woman. Yes. We'll represent the ladies. Wonder Woman. Okay. Tell me this. Who's the best college football team of all time? <laughs> oh, oh, it's difficult. How about this? What's the greatest video game of all time? Greatest video game of all time. Mario. Good one. Hockey. I like it. Anybody else video gamer? You... Madden, YouTuber. What's the greatest YouTuber of all time? Unspeakable. Dude, perfect. Doom? Oh, you t I don't know. I'm going to have to write that one down. Okay, how, last one. What's the greatest candy of all time? Oh, <laughs> I like that. Oh, which is kind of the point. It's hard to make a, a choice, right? What's the greatest of all time? It's hard. It's hard to actually focus. It's, that's the, the name of the game. This VBS is focus. It's hard to narrow down and to think about just one. And there's a story from Jesus' time on earth where a bunch of church people, kind of like this, they gather around Jesus and they say, Jesus, we want you to tell us what is the greatest command of all time? What is the greatest rule of all time? Jesus, tell us the goat. And he says this, or this is what they ask him, I'm sorry. From Matthew chapter 22, they say, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? What's the goat, Jesus? you got to pick one. There were 613, say that with me, 613 commands in their scriptures. And they asked Jesus, which one is the greatest? That's a hard question, especially if you're sitting around a bunch of experts in the law. They knew all the rules. They knew all 613 of them. They knew how they related to each other. You couldn't fool them. So they asked Jesus this question, and they think they already know the answer. So what would you choose? Let me ask you this, kids. School's getting ready to start again, hopefully, sometime in the next five years. And when school starts again, what would you say is the greatest rule at school. The greatest rule at school. Obey your teacher. Spoken from a teacher. Obey your teacher. I like it. What's the greatest rule at school? Lunch is at 11. That bell rule. Hey, yeah, Amelia, what's the greatest rule? None of them. <laughs> She's a rule breaker, I guess. It's hard to think about the greatest rule because a lot of them are important, right? But you know what Jesus chose when all the church people said, Jesus, you got to pick your favorite greatest rule. This is what he chose. Matthew 22, verse 37. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is just like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law, all the rules, all the prophets, all the rule keepers hang on these two commandments. So Jesus says the greatest commandment is love. Love. That's the greatest rule. First, you love God with everything that you have. Heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then you love other people. That's what it says. When it says neighbor, it doesn't just mean Johnny's mop neighbor friend. It doesn't just mean the people next to you. What neighbor means there is other people, the people in this room, people not like you, some like you, all of them. So if Jesus says this is the greatest commandment, then we should really focus our attention on this one commandment. In fact, Jesus goes an extra step, and they didn't ask him to do this, 
But listen to verse 40 again. He goes one step further. He says, all the law and all the prophets hang on these two commandments. In, in other words, it's not just the greatest, but if you miss out on this, nothing else matters. If you're going to obey any rules at all, you have to start with love. So they thought they were asking Jesus a tough question, what's the greatest? He actually goes one step further and says, it's not only the greatest, but nothing else really matters if you don't get this one. So how do we do it? What does it look like? I remember asking the kids, I think it was around Christmas time, what does it look like to love God? And that was a hard question. You can't really run up and smooch him. You can't cuddle him. can't hold his hand. Can you? Can you hold God's hand? Can you kiss him? Can you hug him? You can't do those things. You can, you can worship him. You can say nice things to him. You can talk to him, be in relationship with him. But it's kind of hard to know exactly how to love God. But Jesus does this really interesting thing when he says what the greatest commandment is. He gives them two commandments and then he ties them together. And he says, the first one is to love the Lord your God. The second one is to love other people. And then he says, the second one is like the other. And what he's trying to say here is if you're wondering what it looks like to love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul, mind and strength, it kind of looks like this one. How you love God is how you love other people. Did you know that? The way that you can love God, since you can't hug him and hold his hand, is you can love somebody around you. Somebody difficult to love. Maybe somebody easy to love. So when your siblings or your neighbors or your cousins or your friends, when you show them love, did you know you're actually loving God? You're following the greatest commandment. And I thought it was interesting, kids. Listen to this. It's, he, he talks about love in two different ways. When he says love God, he says love Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, which just means everything you have, right? But then he says, love your neighbor. And he doesn't say, love your neighbor with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. He says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You know why I think he did that? Because we know how to love ourselves. When we're hungry, we get ourselves food. When we're tired, we go to sleep. When we need to laugh, we hang out with friends. When we're sad, we go to somebody who can comfort us. When we're angry, we take a break. We know what we need and we love ourselves. And so Jesus is saying, don't make this harder than it is. You know what it feels like to be loved. Do that for somebody else. That's the greatest commandment. Jesus had a really smart friend named Paul. And Paul wrote most of the New Testament. And this is what Paul says about love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He says, listen, listen to this description of love. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not want what belongs to others. It does not brag. It is not proud. It does not dishonor other people. It does not look out for its own interests. It does not easily become angry. It does not keep track of other people's wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but is full of joy when the truth is spoken. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes. It never gives up. Love never fails. This is how God loves you. Did you know that? So this is how we are to love each other. You guys know emojis? Kids, you know emojis? You're pretty good with emojis? Okay. So love is more than just saying, I love you. Here's the love emoji. You recognize that? The heart emoji? So love is more than me saying, Debbie, I love you. Beckett, I love you. Love goes further than just what we say to other people. Love is patient. And for patient, I chose the winky emoji. Love is patient. So kids, when your brother comes in and knocks over the Lego tower that you've been building for three hours on accident, patience is not getting angry and throwing the Legos at them and chasing them out of the room and holding them down. Patience is taking a step back and taking a deep breath and saying, okay, it was an accident. It happens. We can rebuild. We'll be okay. Patience. Or adults. Patience is when your neighbor's dog repeatedly messes in your yard and you just want to pick it up and throw it in their yard. Or how about that family member that's always late and you just can't stand people that are late? But they're always late every time you do something together. 
Or how about that time your boss told you the promotion was coming, but it's just, it's not? Patient love takes a step back, relaxes, values the other person. All right, what's our next emoji? Love is kind. Look how kind that emoji looks, right? Love is kind. So, kids, when you do go back to school, guess who's going to be there at your school? More than likely. There's going to be a kid there that you don't know that's new. They moved to town from somewhere else. They're going to be at your school. They're not going to have any friends because they're new. They haven't had time to make friends. And somebody who loves with kindness would go up to that kid and say, hey, would you want to play with us at recess? We're going to play freeze tag. Why don't you join us? My name is Brady. Come and play with us. Or at lunchtime, if you don't have assigned seats, come up to them and say, I really want you to sit with me. Would you come sit with me? That's kind love. Or we've been talking about neighboring adults. What does it look like for us to be kind? To make a meal for somebody, to mow their yard, to write somebody a note, to express that you love them. This is kindness. And lastly, love never gives up. Look at that emoji. What's, what's that emoji represent? Startled, what in the world? Love never gives up. Because this is the key part. We can sit here and talk about love being all nice and friendly, but love never fails. Love never gives up. And that means that there are going to be some people that you are called to love who are mean to you. There are going to be some people who don't deserve your love. There's going to be some people who, even though you love them again and again, they never say thank you. There's going to be people that aren't easy to show love to in our lives. And Paul reminds us that love never gives up on those people. There is not a limit. Once you hit that limit of love, you say, okay, we tried. Let's go on to somebody else. That's not how it works. Love never gives up. We could go on, but Jesus makes it simple. He says, when you think about love, love the Lord your God with all your heart and love others as you love yourself. This is the goat, right? I want you to remember that picture of that goat this week. The goat command is to love. The greatest rule in all the world. So will you read this with me one more time? The last slide here. Let's read it together, okay? Everybody together, here we go. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Heavenly Father, thank You for this great Word, this reminder of what it means to focus in on the greatest commandment in all of Scripture. If You could only do one thing well, this is it. To love You and to love others. So God, help us. You showed us what love looked like by bringing Your Son. Would You help us to live that out? with our friends and neighbors and schoolmates and co-workers. God, remind us of this, the importance of this rule, that we can focus our minds on the greatest commandment. We pray in your name. Amen.